Hey guys, Winevitable here with another guide. This is more of a tutorial, not hero focused, a little bit tactic based. We're going to get into a replay here on Cursed Hollow and talk about something in just a minute. Before that, I wanted to give a big shout out to all of you subscribers out there, everybody, uh, that hit that button and that's supporting the content I've been putting out. Thank you. Uh, it means a lot. You know, happy, happy New Year, happy 2015 to you guys. I'm really excited to keep doing this and bringing more content your way. So, uh, every, you know, each one of you guys, uh, it, it makes my heart. You know, it, it get, it get, I feel it, so it's uh, thank you for the support, guys. Um, but yeah, into the into the tutorial, we uh, are on Curse Hollow. This is a replay. I, this just came up, a tactic I'd seen in the past but hadn't really vocalized. It's called lane skipping. And uh, as you can see here, we're in the replay. This was submitted actually on the Reddit by this guy. I think it's, I'm not sure if you say Star OJ or, you know, how you say his name. Um but our lovely Tyrael player here on that, that beautiful mount, the Direwolf. And so lane skipping is a pretty cool tactic. There's a few maps you can do it on. We'll talk about more of the, like how to like get into the basics of it first, but let's show it off and it's just how it works. What is lane skipping? Uh, you actually, right in here between the tier one and the tier two, this is Cursed Hollow, this is on other maps too, but right here, it's a nice area where you can see the Gaz, though, immediately out of the gate. He comes out mid-gate, mid he's out of the gate. You know, he's off to the races, right? The, the gun goes off, the horses are out of the gate. He's racing across the map, and he goes directly here. And he's actually, look at that, so 19 seconds in, he's got his turret down. And he's here to interrupt this minion wave. He has skipped the whole tier 1... We can even zoom out, I forgot. It's been a while since I've been in a replay, but you can zoom out and check it all out. So he's there. Meanwhile, his wave's pushing back right on the, on the right side here. Um, and you can watch. He throws down the turrets and the charge, and then another turret, and he's hacking away. Gazzle's really good at this. We'll talk about some other heroes that are good at this too. Um, but what he's going to do is he's going to clear this entire minion wave. And if you look at the lane, meanwhile, now the two minion waves will be meeting. Like right now, they would be clashing in the middle, uh, and then the heroes would be either clearing the wave or attacking each other. But you can see immediately the Tyrael starts taking a ton of damage because he doesn't have any minions here to block for him. So he's taking the Asmin in it. He's tanking Asmin in and Tyrael's damage if they dish any out. And then he's tanking seven minions. And early game, I mean, even late game, huge minion waves can eat away your HP if you're not careful. But early game, uh, you're going to get destroyed. And you can see he's dropping down to half health here. Now, uh, fortunately, they do see this. Blue team does see this on the minimap. They immediately send the stitches back here. But you can see by the time the reaction happens, I think Gazlo actually could have even gotten these last two possibly, but, you know, Mumu, he's going to work here. Um, and he, he then he tries to escape. Now he's, he's delayed this wave a little bit. He's delayed this one. And you can see that he, uh, the damage here on these towers. Look at this. There's, if we zoom in, how do we, there we go. Like I said, it's been a minute since I've been in a replay. So, you know, there's that, about seven shots left on that one. And then I'm just using the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Seven more on, so it's like seven shots left on each tower. They've taken maybe 20% damage. And this one's a little bit better, maybe 10%. Um, so right away with the timber, there's tower XP too. I'm trying to situate the camera. All right, so the you know the tower hp if you get a tower now you're going to get H xp not hp xp for taking down a tower uh and with this tactic you can see that they've already taken a substantial amount of damage now gazlo is not going to make it out he is going to eventually he gets a nice stun off here his ally comes to help but mumu doesn't make it that's 283 xp now something to note is that Okay, here's how it works. The XP in this. Minion waves, at this point, 531 XP. Okay? And then uh, the kill was 283. What the kill really is, is going to be, I believe it's 300 XP to start, plus 50 per level. And then, of course, if you're up a level, as blue team is up a level right now, if you're up a level, you get less XP per kill. So, and you actually get more if you're down a level. Um, so this is why it's only 283 XP here. Uh, ver versus a whole minion wave, like right now, this minion wave right here is 531 XP. 
And we'll watch this. I think blue does make it back in time for this. Uh, you can see one minion is already... Two minions are dead. Third minion falls. Okay, so there's four more left. Meanwhile, they're chasing this Tyrael. They're not going to get a kill here. I don't I don't think they are. This Tyrael is incredibly elusive, especially with that Eldruin's Might. So, now there's still a few guys alive. The, the minions here have been tanking it, but four out of seven minions died. So, I'm not going to do the math here. You know, four-sevenths of 531... Uh, just get your calculators out. What is that? Uh, oh, okay. now I got it. Now I have to. I said I wasn't going to do it. Now I have to do it. So, four divided by. I'm not going to try and do that in my head either. All right. So that's like 303.4. Okay. XP that they just lost, but they got a kill for 283. So they actually lost XP to get that kill because they left lane. Um, now remember, XP for kills is going to scale up later in the game. So it's going to be. Like, if you did this at... It would be hard to do this at 20 minutes in because most likely the tier 1s are gone already. You know, this, these won't be here at, at 20 minutes in usually. But, you know, later on in the game, even like level 10 probably, it's not as viable to do this because that kill will cost you more than a minion wave will get you, will net you. Uh, but you have to factor in they're also doing damage to these structures. And you can see Gazlo's... Mumo, what are you doing, man? He's going for it. Evil Mumo. No, you, you bad boy. He's, he's going in again. Uh, he goes right back for it. It's just it's hilarious. And there's no vision in here. There's no wards. There's no tower. So another thing is to note, too. He didn't go to this side. He didn't take their watchtower and do it because that would be a big giveaway. Uh, but here, all right, look at this. Wait, he just walks right through the jungle. Nobody sees him. He's got his tower set up. And he's right back at it again. And they're like, oh, my God. Ripping their hair. What is this guy doing? This evil Mumu. He's back there destroying stuff. And you, they push the way back 2v1. But Asmodan is a, a tremendous lane pusher. He's got some of the best lane push in the game. Okay, so that minion wave's dead. Now, let's check out these minions here. What do we got? Three. Is it a full wave? Yeah, it looks like a full wave. There's one guy hidden behind the, the general of hell here. The demonic lieutenant. So, there's seven minions here. And Stitches is going to leave lane. I don't know if he got that first... I don't think he got XP from that first one. I didn't see XP pop up. So, he's going to lose... Oh, uh, we want to check the XP counter here, too. So, and we'll just show this off, actually show you these statistics. Now, meanwhile, there's more turrets going down. These guys are taking damage, and I think the, the mini wave is doing all right. So they get 440. That's still not a full wave of XP, right? We're at level 4. Level 4, 440 XP for that kill. Um, and then I don't think he, he's going to slow the wave down. If you look, this is the same wave. Uh, and you can see where the wave would be if it hadn't, if he hadn't stopped it. Um, now, yeah, you can see, like, okay, so in that time as well, let's see, there's two minions died, so they'll probably get the XP back that they, they won't lose as much now because the Cheerio's coming right back to lane. That's not as big of a deal, but they just lost that, t that tower. They lost the gate. And Asmodan, as I was going to say, he's going to get this. Because he's Asmodan. He just sits there. He's a tank. He's six, you know, not 6,000, but he's a ton of HP. Uh, and he just sits there. He could have actually killed this quite easily. Very easily. I think he wanted to go to help the tribute. Not certain. He's going for mana. Okay, there you go. It went down. That's 400. So that was 800 XP they got from those towers. Now, they're even right now in, in XP, right? So if you look at this, it's two kills to zero. That's not the XP. You actually have to look, I believe. No. Okay, so... I'm not sure if someone... I didn't check. We have to check the other lanes to see if somebody missed XP. But I actually think Red Team, at this point, the way those two went, with just two deaths, uh, plus a like a whole minion wave's worth of XP lost, plus a couple other minions, um, and then the two towers on top of that, these are both 400. That's like That beats Gazlo's deaths right there. The two towers are worth his two deaths. Plus, you know, it's map control, and you're, you've exposed this fort, which is kind of a, you know... Some, another big plus that's not numerical that you can't quantify. It's not, not unquantifiable. Um, just having access to this fort is so good because you can, if their team's out of position, you can run in here and knock it down. So then you count the minion waves, which is like maybe six, seven hundred XP that they lost. They should be behind right now. And I'm guessing something happened in one of the other lanes. Someone got forced out of or missed XP somewhere. Um, there were no other kills. And you know, you'd have to go back and look at the replay. But just based off of the bottom lane events, two kills. Uh, worth two turrets at this point in the game. They're about an even trade. And then they lost minion XP. So, red team would, would be ahead if the other lanes performed well. 
I believe. I, I'm, I'm not trying to blame anyone, but I just I feel like that's what happened without going back and looking, just based off of the numbers. And they're still able to get a tribute here amongst all of that. Um, and they are even, like I said, they're not ahead. But uh, I think if you had your other two levels, uh, two lanes, performing up like even with the enemy team, you'd have been ahead. Just bottom lane would have gotten you ahead with the amount of XP you had. Uh, now, I'm not sure what Moomoo's doing at this point. He's not doing the same trick just again, just, you know, right away. He actually looks like he's going to come in here and try and steal their, their easy camp, possibly. This is pretty risky. Uh, like I said, when you take this watchtower, it gives away your presence. A Nova or a Zeratul who's cloaked? Uh-oh, it's getting intense here. And is he going to make it out? Oh my god. Go, Moomoo. Don't do it. Uh-oh, uh oh 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 Okay, so sorry, the Zeratul made it out. All right, so... Uh, if a Zeratul or Nova takes this, you kind of go like, what, we just lost our watchtower, how'd that happen? Because you don't see them on the mini-map. Uh, now a good player will recognize, oh, I didn't see anybody take it. It was the, the Zeratul or the Nova. In this case, if a Gazla walks into sight range, anybody else that's not cloaked, they're going to see you on the mini-map. Any, like, average to good player is going to see you on the mini-map. Um, you know, anybody that's that's map has map awareness, really, and isn't focused on something else intently. We'll see you, and then they'll they'll know what you're up to. They'll, they'll come over and find you. Um, they might not get there in time, but it's very risky, especially if you don't know where the enemy team is. Uh, and so that's why, you know, I think he's picking this spot here. If you were on the blue team, then, of course, you would want to go to this spot. It would be the same, tr you know, traveling distance and all on time, relative, you know, so it would be uh, the thing to do if you're on the blue team. Now, they're fighting over tributes here. Um, we're not going to talk about that too much. I do want to go and talk about which we'll kind of let the action play out and talk about some of the other things that go into this um, before we wrap the video up here. Uh, let's see. What do I want? I want to get my notepad up here. Okay. So, we talked about the XP and how it was kind of like they came out ahead a little bit by the, the minion XP that was lost because you this what this tactic does, it not only f exposes the towers, which are now down and the fort's exposed it forced in this case two heroes now i th you know we didn't exactly watch the stitches and the in the tyriel chase down the gazlo um i think with quicker reaction times and maybe a little bit better play it like if they'd coordinated a bit better you might not have lost as much xp so against really solid players they might not lose any lane xp it's really just going to get you it should i would think it would at least with an asthma in there it's going to at least get you these towers because it forces one hero out of lane uh and it keeps the wave back which allows your wave to just push in. And then with that wave as support, your other hero in lane can out lane whoever's left in that lane and take down a tower or, you know, a tower or two. Um, so I do think it's viable, even at higher levels. Uh, you just have to, you have to play well. You know, you, as the Gazlo, you have to get the timing right. You don't want to die immediately. You have to distract somebody for a long time and get, and keep the wave back and try and kill the entire wave. And then as, um, the, whoever's in lane, you have to recognize when to push and take advantage. Now, thinking about this more, too, what are uh, some of the, the heroes that are good at this and some of the ones that are bad at, at, at or uh, good at defending this, how to play against this, too, right? So before we get to the defense, uh, Gazel obviously is a great choice, probably the best, because he has the turrets he can place down. Other specialists would be really good at this, too. Uh, Asmodan, I would say you'd want to leave in lane because he has the laser, which he just sits there and he channels it. Um, that wouldn't really be good against the minion wave. That's much better in lane against these structures. And that's what allows him to burn through these so quickly. So kind of having a Gazlo and an Asmodan is kind of like ideal. Um, that's really like, uh, you know, like I think the best combo you can maybe, I, you can make a case for a Zagara in there maybe or something. I don't know. But like, an, I feel like Asmodan and Gazlo is probably the best comp for that. Um, and so it works out really well, but you keep the Asma in the lane, the Gazlo goes back. Zagara could do it. She has the Roaches and she has the Hydra. Um, she could come in here and, and clear the wave pretty quickly. Nazebo could drop the Zombie Wall and his his Spiders and his Toads. And, uh, you know, they're fighting here a little bit. And go ahead and um, clear this out. Maybe an Abathur with Mines could do it, but... I just think you'd be it'd be hard to get the mines off. I don't know, I'd have to check the timing to see if you can drop mines fast enough. But you wouldn't want to burrow here, Zabbath, that'd be suicide. Um, so who else could do it? It doesn't have to be a specialist. A Falstad, for example, could walk here. Just walk across the map to here. 
he has great wave clear. I don't think he would make it in time because he's slower. Um, it would be pretty, you'd have to test it out. You'd probably have to like, come out here and then barrel roll through through this area and then come down. And then if you have another barrel roll, barrel roll through here, it'd be very close to do it with the, I don't think a false set's fast enough. If he was, and you wouldn't have to fly, you could get in here and actually clear the wave and then fly out, uh, would be pretty cool to see. Uh, you can, and other maps you can do this on too. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of any other heroes. I mean, anybody with good wave clear could do it. A Tassar could do it. A Vala could do it. Now the thing is, you got to recognize you're probably not going to survive. It is, it is probably most like a suicide mission. Um, and you can see they're now cursed. Uh, <clears throat> and so, um, maps. That's what we wanted to talk about. What other maps are good at this? I would say the ones you don't want to do this on are Haunted Mines. Just too small, too narrow. You really need a, a big area to get through. Like, this this jungle is just perfect because there's no vision. There's no vision in here. It's a big map. Haunted Mines is a small map. And uh, there's a watchtower guarding that you're going to have to pretty much walk through to get to that point. So Haunted Mines is probably not a good map. Uh, and Dragonshire, I think, is just too... There's too many hedges there to prevent easy access. I don't think you could get there fast enough to do a really good job. Garden of Terror, I don't know that you can get there fast enough either. Um, it's not really a straight shot. It's Maybe it's possible. It's also a very large map, so it's worth trying that out. Uh, Blackheart's Bay is actually doable. That's another one that's doable. Just like you can see here on Crushed Hollow, you see it works. Uh, Blackheart's Bay, let's see, if this is the, say, the turn-in where Blackheart sits, and then you've got like the smoke and you come over here and there's like a bridge this say this is the bridge roughly right right there and then there's a uh, the you get to like right behind the fort over here um if you run across out your mid gate and you run right up into where blackheart's turn in is and you run across the middle of the map you can actually get and cut the wave off behind if this was the tier one you could cut it off right here if you go directly there right out of the gate uh there's a clip with who is it? Symbiote Gaming doing this uh, SMG. They do it in the tournament. Actually, that's where I first saw it. Um, it's a pretty cool tactic, and you can actually go there as a team and clear the wave. It's so close. That's another thing too. Uh, now in this case, uh, Black Hearts is a unique map. This map, I don't think you can really do this as a team. You can't. I don't think you could send five here. You'd lose. You would lose wave XP here and here. Uh, most likely, I don't know that you you could get back in time unless you had like a false dad. But then they'd have to walk. You know, that's the uh, I don't yeah five. Maybe you could send two heroes here, and then the idea is you kill these this wave, and then all of a sudden the other team has to make a choice: do they come fight you and lose wave XP, or do they stay in lane and just kill the minions? The thing is, if you're if two of you are out of lane right here. And then the other two enemy heroes are in lane. They're just going to clear that wave while you clear this wave. And it's going to offset. Um, so I don't even know that sending two heroes is good. I think ideally you do want to send one. On this map, on Black Arts, like I said, you can do five. It's a unique map. You could send all five to that that spot right behind the mid lane tower. And, and get ex, you know get kill, clear the wave and then go to the turn in. I mean, not to turn in, go, into the, go to the top chest to fight over the top chest. Um, but... Here, I think ideally, yeah, you're sending one in, like a Gazlo or a Zagara. Um, Nazebo maybe could do it. Somebody with good wave clear, like a Tassar, or, you know, a Yavala. Like, somebody that's just going to clear the wave out really fast. And then maybe they have a chance of escaping, but it's not necessary. I think Gazlo, though, is probably the best one at this. And then, thinking about ways to play against it. We talked about, like, the maps that it's good on, but, but you had to think, too, how do we play against this? And what heroes are good against this? Now... The one hand, the Gazel comes in here and he cleared out the wave, right? He gets he gets XP. They're going to get that XP anyways as long as they're they're competent players and they're not forced out of lane, right? They're going to get that XP. Even if the, the waves had met, they would still probably get the minion wave XP. They wouldn't be zoned out in lane. So they're not getting anything from that. What they're gaining an advantage of is by pulling you out of lane, and then all of a sudden, this wave plus the... Let's actually do this. Let's go back to the beginning. Plus the Asmodean are then pushing. Let's watch. Let's forget about the Gazlo for a second. Let's watch. We'll speed things up here. <clears throat> and 
And, oh, I get to play. Well, that would help. All right. So, the UI is a little bit bugged right now because it's alpha. When you, That's why I hesitate to restart a replay from the beginning like that with control E. You can see in this case. Okay, things are a lot clearer now. If you look at the way red team set up, they had two top lane and two bottom plus the Gazlo. So I believe they lose. They actually lose a wave here. If they'd had one person mid instead of down here or up here, they wouldn't lose this wave of XP and it would be a lot better. Uh, as this stands, this Tyrael really can't do anything and the stitches isn't here. But I think if you had had, if, if blue team had had two heroes in this lane, they could just clear this and deal with the Asmodan and it wouldn't be, they wouldn't be any worse for the wear because it's 2v1. Um, now the Asmodan pushes pretty hard, but you have to recognize that they're gonna, their wave's gonna get pushed now. Their lane's getting pushed right now with this. And so, Tyrael gets the XP, but he can't defend the towers. They're taking damage. They do get this XP the, here, right? So this is, this works. This defense like this works. Leaving one person in lane, I would always recommend probably leaving somebody in lane because you don't want to miss the, the wave XP. You have to leave somebody in lane. Uh, now, later on, the Tyrael does leave lane and they both go after this guy for the kill. But I don't know that... Put it this way, if... Okay, they get the kill, right? If they had stayed in lane, they, they get full minion XP, right? Both teams get XP, the same amount of XP. Uh, if Even if they don't get the kill on Gazlo, they're, they're even. They've taken a little bit of damage. But if he does it again, and you get a kill on him later, when it's worth more, then it's going to hurt the red team. So I think ideally you just stay in lane and deal with this wave. At most, send one person. You, or if you have two people roaming and they're both down here, you could send the two people. But you want to leave at least a person in each lane to soak. Um, and I think abandoning it like this with a two two going up here is risky. I mean, is is not beneficial is what I mean to say. Uh, not risky, but not beneficial. It's not risky. It's just that it hurts you because you're losing wave XP and the Asmodan gets to push for free. Now, they almost get a kill here on the Tyrael, but he's hard to, to gank, like we were saying. So, um, what else could you do, really? I th ideally, I think that's what you have to do. You either, say, forget the Gazlo, and you keep everybody in lane, and just push it back. Because you have a, like a 2v1. It depends on how the lanes stack up, but I think you could actually get a 2v1 here and push this back. Um, but in this case, it's, it's a really weird setup, because it's, especially in solo queue, you have one guy here, two mid, and two top. Well, what is this guy? This guy can't leave lane. So the Gazo gets a free wave, right? He gets a free lunch. And then there's two red heroes here. So it's essentially a 3v1 bottom lane. Um, and the Tyrael, what's he going to do? Like, what does he do? He has to, uh, you know, like, in a situation like that, you just get XP. You can't really do anything. You can't protect. So that, in a case, like, there's, like, a couple different things going on here is what I'm trying to say. Um, and it, it, a lot of it depends on how the waves the, the lanes are set up, what what uh, what people put in each lane in the beginning of the game. Like I'm saying, if it's a two top lane, one for each team mid lane and two bottom lane, and the Gazlo goes here, the other two just push the lane out. You could get the kill on Gazlo, but think of it this way, if you just push this lane back, towers are worth more XP if you can get them. Um, and like I said, you have to at least keep one person in lane to, to get the wave XP. You could send somebody else after him. And so if you have like an Illidan, and Illidan is really good at chasing, uh, I would send the Illidan. Um, who else could you send here? Something to deal with the, the camps. Like on this comp, the Zagara would be good because she's got, she can drop Roaches, she can drop the Hydralisk uh, on the Gazlo. The Roaches will tank the turrets while she kills him. Mm, I don't know, Zeratul, I mean, could kill him in the jungle once he leaves. I mean, anybody can really do it. I, would, I don't think it's necessarily such a big deal on who goes after him, as long as they're 1v1 capable. Um, like, I wouldn't send my own Gazlo back here to defend this, because the other Gazlo can just walk out of your turrets. Like, you're going to drop your turrets, waste them back here, and then he'll walk away from it. So somebody that has 1v1 potential. Stitches has a hard time of it. <clears throat> uh, he does have the hook, but... The Gazo can also run away from 
So like an assassin, I think an assassin, like a high damage assassin is really good at this. Like a, the Vala, you know, Zeratul, a Zagara could do it. Um, Nazebo, even if you got like a good zombie wall down, could do it. Somebody with a lot of damage that can just kill kill the uh, the Gazdo pretty quickly. Tyrael's good early game. He's a good choice too. So I don't know that there's anyone that's really stellar. Like I said, the Kitnailadin would be perfect. I think because he's got that stick. He sticks to you once he gets on you. Um, and I would hesitate. To, like I wouldn't send an Abathur there, right? <laughs> you don't want to slap him. Uh, and of course, another Gazdo probably wouldn't be a good choice. But but anybody that can burst him down quickly would be a good choice so try it out uh i don't know if it's a tactic you guys want to use or not it's certainly viable like i said on this map on black hearts it, it works i don't know if garden of terror would work really well or not uh i don't know the timings on that to see if you can get to that wave fast enough probably not uh, and you don't have to do this on the first wave you could always catch it on the second wave Remember, there's there's waves every thirty seconds, so you know we're uh, we're pretty far into the game now. We're at a minute thirty. The first one spawns at fifteen seconds, so forty five minute fifteen. This is the what third wave. So there was another wave before this one that you could have cut off. You know, you could come down here, drop some turrets, push this wave back, mount up, come back and catch the third wave. It'll be here at about hmm, minute twenty. Be right here at about a minute twenty in the game, and then boom you can catch this wave instead. You don't have to go for the first wave either. Uh, it's definitely very useful, I think. And the idea is the best time to use it is when you have somebody who can push. Um, now that's two cases. You had, in this case, the Asmodan could push. He could push this really easily. He's a really good push person. A Zagara, a spa, you know, any specialist like a Nazebo with a lot of pushing power. And in another case, they don't have to be good pushers, but if you have a three, like a three stack, a tri stack, including the Gazlo, and you have two other heroes down here, then they can push that lane pretty hard. Um, and, and so, you know, if you just have one person here, like if there was just a Tyrael versus this Tyrael in a mirror matchup, he's not gonna be able to, he could get some damage done, but he's not gonna do a ton of damage like the Asmodan would. So it's a pretty cool idea. I really just wanted to share the idea with everybody so you could, you know, think about that and maybe use it, try it out, experiment it. If you, especially if you like playing Gaslo, um, <clears throat> that's something I'm probably gonna try out. When, you know, I'll play. I'll pick up some Gazlo, and I got to do a build for him. So, I'll try it out. Um, more just to get it awareness. I don't have all of these specific timings down for it, but uh, you know, you can definitely give it a shot and throw your opponents off. Uh, you know, why not have some fun, right? This is a game. Get out there and, and give it a shot, guys. So uh, I've got some more guides coming, and gonna do actually a second look at Cursed Hollow. This map in particular, we're going to talk about the actual uh, strategies here, besides lane skipping a little bit. Some of them, the ways to approach the tributes, at least early game, we'll do, we're going to do a video on that one actually just up after this. So, uh, lots more content coming. You know, we've still got a bunch of heroes to do, and uh, I've been working on them. So, it'll be up soon, guys. Uh, thanks for all the support, and, uh, you know, I'll see you guys soon.